When you think of the Americas, I'm guessing the first thing that comes into your mind is not the word monarchy. But actually, the continents have been home to a couple of them. Not counting the pre-Columbian ones, there was the Kingdom of Haiti during the 1810s, and Mexico was an empire on two different occasions during the 19th century. There was also the short-lived Kingdom of Araucania and Patagonia, proclaimed by a French lawyer, and finally, there was the Empire of Brazil, lasting from 1822 till 1889, and founded by Pedro I, which is whom this video is about. But before we get to him, we need a bit of backstory. What is today Brazil had been claimed by the Portuguese crown in the year 1500, and grew to become the wealthiest and most important colony in their empire. And so when the Portuguese mainland was occupied by Napoleon's forces in 1807, the royal family decided to escape to Brazil and set up a court in Rio de Janeiro. During their 15 year stay there, the colony of Brazil was elevated to the rank of kingdom and enjoyed a large degree of autonomy. By 1820, however, the French troops had long since left the Portuguese mainland, and a liberal revolution broke out there, demanding the return of the royal family to Europe and the establishment of a constitutional monarchy. Thus, the following year, King John VI sailed for Portugal and left his eldest son Pedro as regent of Brazil. However, the revolutionaries back in Europe soon pushed to return the status of Brazil to being a colony, thereby Pedro was in practice demoted to merely being governor of the Rio de Janeiro province, but by then, the Brazilians had gotten used to having some degree of self-rule and did not intend to let go of it so easily. Therefore, when orders were sent demanding Pedro's return to Portugal, he, emboldened by the growing Brazilian opposition, decided to defy them. As a response to that, Portuguese troops in Rio de Janeiro mutinied and tried to persuade Pedro to leave by force. But with the support of militias and armed civilians, the troops were outnumbered and their mutiny was put down. By now, it had become more and more apparent that a final rupture with Portugal was inevitable. And so, in the following months, Pedro tried to uphold the semblance of unity with the mainland for as long as possible, while also going on a tour in the provinces to garner support. On his way back from Sao Paulo, the prince received news that the Portuguese parliament would not accept any self-governance for Brazil, and that anyone who disobeyed their orders were to be punished. After reading the letter, the prince mounted his horse, and before his entourage held a speech, ending with the words, independence or death. On his 24th birthday, Pedro was proclaimed Emperor of Brazil, and two months later, in December of 1822, he was crowned in the old cathedral in Rio de Janeiro. But just because he now enjoyed the title of Emperor didn't mean that he actually had control over Brazil. All over the country, troops loyal to the Portuguese crown were still stationed, and it would take an additional two years of fighting until the last of them surrendered. Meanwhile, the Constituent and Legislative General Assembly had been elected for the purpose of drafting a constitution for the Empire. But as one of its members started claiming the existence of a Portuguese conspiracy against Brazilian interests, and that citizens of Portuguese birth, including the Emperor, were involved in it, Pedro I had ordered its dissolution in 1823. He then put the newly established Council of State in charge of composing a new constitutional draft, which was sent out to all town councils, where the vast majority voted in favour of it. There were, however, still those who objected against the centralized nature of the new constitution, and together, rebels in the provinces of Chiara, Paraiba and Pernambuco attempted to secede from Brazil and form the Confederation of the Equator. But by the end of 1824, that rebellion had been put down. The country wouldn't be able to enjoy peace for long though, as just a few months later, a small band of rebels backed by the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata, later known as Argentina, declared Brazil's southernmost province of Cisplatina to be independent. In reality, the United Provinces expected to be able to annex Cisplatina, and so in response, Brazil declared war on them in 1825. In the ensuing conflict, no one would gain the upper hand, and it would end after a couple of years with the independence of Cisplatina as the Republic of Uruguay. But back in 1825, there had been some good developments as well, as Portugal finally decided to recognize Brazilian independence. However, a few months after that, Pedro received word that his father, King John VI, had died, thus making him the new King of Portugal. But since a reunion of the two countries would have been unacceptable, he soon announced his abdication of the Portuguese crown in favor of his eldest daughter, who would become Queen Maria II. Despite the abdication though, Pedro I would in many ways continue to act as absentee king of Portugal and interfere in the country's diplomatic and internal affairs. 
However, having to maintain his position as Emperor of Brazil, while simultaneously protecting his daughter's interest in Portugal, would prove a huge challenge for him. In 1828, two years into Maria's reign, the throne was seized by Pedro's brother, Miguel, who reinstated absolute monarchy. This, along with scandals and political opposition in Brazil, added to Pedro's growing will to leave the tedious life of a constitutional monarch behind and instead go to Portugal, where he could fight for his daughter's rights, champion the oppressed, uphold liberty, and live a life of freedom and action that he seemed to have been better suited for. He would finally make the decision to abdicate after an incident in April of 1831. Unrest had recently broken out in the capital, following the harassment of Portuguese communities by street gangs. They had been incited by radicals within the Liberal Party, and on the 11th of March that year, the Portuguese had retaliated. The incapacity of the government to restore order had prompted Pedro to fire the Liberal cabinet. But upon doing that, a large crowd, also incited by the radicals, gathered in Rio de Janeiro and demanded the immediate restoration of the cabinet. Sometime after nightfall, on the 6th of April, army troops, including his royal guard, deserted the emperor and joined the protesters. Realizing how detached from Brazilian affairs he had become, Pedro announced his abdication a couple of hours later. He then sailed for Europe and left his five-year-old son, also named Pedro, as the new emperor of Brazil. The following months, Pedro travelled back and forth between France and Great Britain in a failed attempt to gain their support. While in Paris, he did however befriend and receive the full moral support of the now ageing Marquis of Lafayette, who famously fought in the American Revolutionary War. In January of 1832, he left Paris for the Azores, the last Portuguese territory loyal to his daughter. From there, he along with other prominent Portuguese liberals embarked for the mainland. Two years later, he had successfully restored his daughter to the throne, but the war had taken its toll on Pedro and he was now dying of tuberculosis. During his illness, he wrote an open letter to the Brazilians, begging that they would adopt a gradual abolition of slavery, much like he had done with this estate in Santa Cruz. Pedro died on the 24th of September 1834, and according to his request, his heart was placed in a church in Porto, and his body was interred in the pantheon of the House of Braganza.